So So now that we've seen what happens uh, in the model when the opt-in cost goes to zero, and in particular we've seen that unemployment doesn't disappear, so that we have some job rationing in the model when uh, the opt-in cost goes to zero. There is still, you know, when productivity is low enough, or if you want, when wages are high enough, uh, there is an amount of workers that firms will never want to hire, despite the fact that we're putting three. So there is some job rationing. Um, now what we can do is look at the other side of the same coin. Um, that is, look at what happens when uh, the search effort of an employed workers goes to infinity. And uh, what we're going to see is that even when workers search infinitely hard, because there is a lack of job in the model, you know, unemployment is not going to disappear. And in fact, when the search effort goes to infinity, we converge to exactly the same point as when the opt-in cost goes to zero. And the amount of unemployment that's left is always the amount of uh, rationing unemployment. So let's see that. And in fact, that, that's uh, pretty simple given all the work we've already done um, on the role of search effort and how it affects the labor supply. So what happened in the model when job search <coughs> effort, which we had called E, goes to infinity? Uh, and so for that, I think the easiest is just to uh, use our labor market diagram because we know that the labor demand is unaffected by E and we know that the labor supply on the other hand shifts out when uh, the search effort goes up. So we can, using that, we can see what will happen when search effort goes to infinity. So uh, we can uh, plot our diagram. So we'll have the y-axis. Here yeah, we'll have the x-axis. We'll have the size of the labor force. So here we have tightness. And you know, just as an aside, once we have search effort, you remember that tightness is defined as uh, the ratio of vacancy to total search effort, which is E times U. Uh, just you know, it's not it's not critical, but it's good to remember that. That's just the kind of modified definition here. Also, you know, it doesn't uh, doesn't really matter. But it's good to know. Uh, just okay. So here we have on the x-axis the employment. Here we have the labor force. Here we have our zero. Okay. So we we'll have labor supply. Looks something like this. Okay. Labor demand. You know, it's a typical labor demand here. Downward sloping. We can okay. Right, so that's our labor demand, which depends on theta. Okay. All right, so where is our equilibrium here, as usual? So we have tightness in equilibrium is here. And employment in equilibrium is here. Okay, great. So now the question is what happens when the search effort goes to infinity? That's what we want to study. Um, so we know that the labor demand is not going to move, but we know that as effort goes up, the labor supply shifts out. So, for instance, this is a labor supply with higher search effort. It tends to boost, when effort goes up, it tends to boost the labor supply. So, for any amount of tightness, you get higher employment. So, when you know the effort goes up and we shift like this, we have a new equilibrium. 
that is here. This is our new equilibrium when search effort is higher. Okay? Now let's say we stimulate search effort even further. You know, like workers are very, you know, we're in a big recession, you know, uh, people in households in which you usually have two incomes, more and more people lose their job, savings run out, you know, people become very worried, so they really start to search very hard for job. Then, you know, in our labor supply, we need to shift even further out like this, if search effort goes up even more. Okay, and so your equilibrium now is going to move here. So we can see as search effort goes up and up and up, tightness tends to fall and employment tends to go up. Okay, so here we have a new employment that's higher, here a new employment that's even higher, and tightness that's lower. Okay. And so what happens at the limit where search effort is infinite? So then, as we can see from this, uh, from this graph, as search effort becomes higher and higher, basically, uh, the labor supply becomes almost rectangular, and when effort is infinite, it's going to look something like this. So this is the labor supply when the effort goes to infinity. Okay, and so we can see what is the equilibrium then when effort goes to infinity. Well, you know, it's at the intersection of the supply and the demand. So the equilibrium is going to be here. And so what can we see? Well, we can see that indeed uh, unemployment doesn't disappear although people search infinitely hard for job. And so this situation that we have here, so that's, uh, so what's so special about this point? We have search effort goes to infinity, so people are really desperate to work. But employment is still less than the size of the labor force. So the unemployment rate is positive. So here you have a situation where people are desperate to work, but your unemployment rate is positive. So you have basically queues of workers that form at factory gates. This is exactly what it is. So here we have exactly what we observed during the Great Depression and what we observed during the Great Recession as well. We have people who are desperate to work, and but we have unemployment that doesn't uh, that doesn't vanish. So this is something that couldn't exist in the standard model. It couldn't exist in uh, the model with rigid wage, but it exists here. Uh, even though people search infinitely hard for work, unemployment doesn't appear just because um, firms do not want to hire all the workers that are in the labor force. Uh, so now we have a model that's consistent with the existence of queues in uh, the labor market. The model can describe uh, these queues. You know, in bad times when people are very desperate to work. First, if people were not desperate to work and such effort was finite, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have exactly, you wouldn't have exactly that. Um, so we have a model that 
provide a better description of the labor market uh, than the standard versions of the model. Okay. So that's what happened. And uh, you notice that the amount of unemployment that's left when E goes to infinity, how much unemployment do we have? Well, the amount of unemployment you can read it here. This is the unemployment that we have uh, when E goes to infinity. And that unemployment is a gap between the intersection of the labor demand with the x-axis and the size of the labor force. So the unemployment that's left is exactly rational unemployment. You know that we've defined before the amount of unemployment that prevails when uh, tightness uh, when tightness is equal to zero on your on the labor demand or the amount that prevails when the opting cost is zero. Here is the exact same amount of unemployment that prevails. So we get in a situation that's exactly the same uh, in terms of unemployment as when the opting costs are zero. So when search effort goes to infinity, amount of unemployment is equal exactly that's left is exactly equal to rationing unemployment which we've called U R. And uh, you know the condition for rationing unemployment to be positive is exactly the same here as it was before. You know this rationing unemployment that we have here, it exists only if the intercept of the labor demand with the x-axis is below uh, is below h the size of the labor force. If you were on the other side, if you was on the other side of h, you wouldn't have any rationing unemployment. Okay. So the condition that we figured out before that productivity has to be low enough. You know, when productivity falls with, uh, with rigid wages, you know, the labor demand tends to shift inside. When our productivity drops, and so basically as productivity drops, the labor demand shifts inside, and at some point the intercept becomes below H, and you've got some rationing unemployment. Okay. Here is positive whenever uh, demand is weak enough, which is the same as saying that productivity is low enough. Okay. Uh, and so it's quite neat, uh, we, we, you know, whether uh, effort goes to infinity or the recruiting cost goes to zero, it's the same amount of unemployment that will prevail, which is rationing unemployment. Okay. Um, all right. So now we've seen a model in which unemployment doesn't disappear when uh, either effort goes to infinity or the working cost goes to zero. So the model is consistent with queues of workers um, in bad times. Um, so the last thing we can look at is what's going to happen just in normal situation in which efforts finite, working cost is positive. Like what do we learn? From this, uh, from this study of the extreme case in which opting cost goes to zero or effort is equal to infinity. Um, 